Today we're going to be talking about eight rules to be a successful quarterback. A rule number one with being a successful quarterback is don't let the play result dictate your emotions. I think a lot of times when quarterbacks they throw deep touchdown pass, touchdown pass in a big moment, they're all fired up and they take that type of energy into the next play. But what happens when a bad play happens? When you throw a pick? And guys, that's inevitable when it comes to this position. You're going to have a bad throw. You're going to throw an interception. Then they let their emotions are on this roller coaster throughout the entire game. So when you throw a bad play, come off to the sideline, you're letting the result dictate your emotions and then when you bring that onto the next rep your performance goes like this so guys I'm telling you right now be completely cold with your emotions to the play result you throw a 50 yard touchdown pass yeah go celebrate but the second you hit the sideline your mindset is next play you throw a pick you go to the sideline you learn from it then your mindset is next play do not let your emotions be dictated by the result of the play now rule number two to be a successful quarterback is understand the 1,000 rep rule and understand the 10,000 rep rule so what do I mean by that it takes 10,000 reps to master a habit it takes a thousand reps to break a bad habit so if you're a quarterback and you struggle with your throwing motion let's say let's say you have a problem with an over stride it takes a thousand reps in a row of a short stride to be able to fix that habit and to make it muscle memory now that doesn't necessarily guarantee that you'll never over stride again remember it takes 10,000 reps to master a bad habit so that's how I feel in the offseason you should structure your workouts as a quarterback I think a lot of quarterbacks they get so caught up in seven on seven throwing routes with their friends throwing routes with receivers and while all that is important I like that at the back half of your offseason in the beginning of your offseason you should be solely focused on mechanical areas where you need to improve short stride quick backstroke making sure that your weight stays back when you throw 10,000 reps of that will help you master your mechanics so you can be more efficient when that season rolls around now also fellas if you're a quarterback and you would like a two month long training schedule that you can follow in the gym and on the field with quarterback specific training exercises check out that very first link in the description below our on field workout and our gym workout is separated Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday etc just like that format you're going to have the exact sets and reps to do for on field throwing mechanic drills footwork drills and then you're going to have the exact sets and reps to do for quarterback specific gym exercises so guys if you want a daily schedule with video examples of each drill and each gym exercise again very first link in that description below we'd love to get you on that let's get back to this video now rule number three to be a successful quarterback is you cannot be a vocal leader without showing and learning or leading by example first so a lot of times guys get a lot of bad advice at the quarterback position like oh you need to be vocal you need to get on your guys you need to be a vocal leader but if you don't showcase like that you are not going to ask the team to do something that you wouldn't do yourself like getting after in the gym spending extra time after practice just learning your place they're not going to respect you and good luck trying to do that with the team especially when you're an underclassman so guys make sure that you show and lead by example you show up first to everything you're showing up first to the gym you're not skipping any reps in the gym you're staying later after practice to work on things with your receivers with your linemen so when you do get on them they know that you would do the exact same thing and you would hold them accountable just to the level of work that you're putting in yourself but don't be a vocal leader without leading by example first rule number four to being a successful quarterback is understand that mechanics are an everyday thing I think a lot of quarterbacks just think that oh I'm gonna go out to the field twice a week and throw and I'll fix these problems that I have like we talked about in the very beginning of this video guys there's a thousand rep rule and then a 10,000 rep rule and to be able to maximize those reps you need to do things every day for your throwing mechanics does that mean getting a football and throwing every day no you could do things like different hip mechanic drills rotation drills that you could do and we have tons of those on our channel so if you guys want access to those drills guys completely free too by the way post in the comment section below and just say you want those solo drills or mechanical drills for a quarterback and I'll send you over a link no problem but guys you have to do those things on an everyday basis as that will engrave those mechanical aspects of your game into your head build muscle memory faster so you can improve at a better rate but also at a faster rate now rule number five to be a successful quarterback is you need to watch more film than anybody on your team even sometimes the coaching staff so what are you looking for on film the one thing that I would always try to find as a quarterback whenever I would watch film and I would watch countless hours of film every single night you should be honestly trying to get one to two hours of film in every single day especially when you're in season preparing for a team one to two hours every day non-negotiable but what you're trying to look for is different tendencies of a defense you're trying to look for okay in this situation they 
they run this coverage. In this situation, they do this. In this situation, they roll the coverage from two high to one high. So when you're in a game and your head's in the game and you're realizing, okay, it's third and short. Whenever we're in third and short, they love to come out in this coverage. You could be prepared for it and you could be a step ahead of that defense. That's what allows us to play fast and have a better success rate while we're on the field. Now, also, fellas, if you're a quarterback and you want to learn how you can read defenses better, how you guys can study film better, check out that second link in the description below. You can get access to over 500 different videos that I myself have made, all for quarterbacks to learn how they can read coverages and diagnose defenses. We break down everything we put into categories, like cover one's this, cover two's this, three, etc. And every single video is around three to five minutes explaining the mental side of the game for the quarterback position. So guys, if you want like the Netflix for quarterbacks, check out that second link in that description below. Now the next rule for quarterbacks to be successful is understand that it is your responsibility to elevate the play of everybody on the field, not just yourself. Because as a quarterback, guys, we're only as good as our team. We're only as good as our offensive line. We're only as good as our center. We're only as good as our receivers, our running backs. So you need to make sure. This is why as a quarterback, it's the hardest position in all of sports, in my opinion, because you not only have to know your job, you got to know everybody's job on the field. So if a lineman's not doing a protection right, if a running back isn't doing some type of fake correctly, you need to get on them and you need to make sure that you know their job better than they know their job. So you can elevate the play of them. That's our responsibility as a quarterback. That's the position that we decided to choose. Now, with another thing is receivers. A lot of times quarterbacks will sit there and complain like, oh, my receivers can't catch. Oh, my receivers are slow. They don't run good routes. They don't get open. Well, how about you spend some extra time with them? That's on you. You're the leader of the team. You're the CEO of the offense. You need to make sure that everybody is up to speed with yourself if you think that you're that good and they're not living up to your standards. So take them to workouts. Take them to your quarterback coach. Spend time with them after practice, after off-season weights, and make sure that their skills are where they need to be because, again, we're only as good as our team. Now, rule number seven for quarterbacks to be successful is train uncomfortable. So something I make my quarterbacks do a lot of is a lot of pocket movement drills, but I put them in uncomfortable situations because as a quarterback, we, we play one of the most unpredictable positions there are. Like you really don't necessarily know. Like this is why I hate, I hate this when quarterbacks do this is they'll set up like four separate like hurdles or cones or like black bags, for example, and they just shuffle through. They shuffle through, they shuffle back, and then they get to the end of it and then they just throw. That's one of the most scripted things that you could possibly do as a quarterback. And I I understand it. You're working on your base. You're working on your footwork. I get it. That's not how the position is played, guys. In the pocket, we drop back. We may get pressure from the guard, and I got to be able to react. We may get pressure outside. I got to be able to step up. It's not scripted. It's a reaction 99% of the time. Actually, 100% of the time, it's a reaction. So that's how you have to train. So what I'll have my quarterbacks do is I'll have them drop back, and I'll give them like I'll have a guy set up like another quarterback as an end, and we'll be working just a simple dig or a simple post, or whatever. And I'll either have that guy go outside, we step up, come inside, we step back, but they have to react. They got to keep their eyes downfield and they got to treat it like a game. So guys, train uncomfortably. It's not easy, but you want to replicate a game the best you can while you are training. Now, rule number eight to be a successful quarterback, do not neglect the gym. I think so many quarterbacks are kind of prima donnas almost in a sense with that, is that they don't want to work out. They don't want to put in the extra work with their team when they're lifting in the gym because they're just like, oh, I'm a quarterback. I don't have to do that. I'm just worried about throwing the ball. I'm just worried about doing this. If you want to earn the respect of your teammates, you got to make sure that you're getting after it in the gym with them. And again, you may be doing different exercises because you're a quarterback. And I actually want you to do that. I don't want you to train like a bodybuilder, a linebacker, or an O lineman. But you need to be in there and showcasing to your teammates that you're about the work because that's how you can get a group of guys to rally around you. If they see the leader of the team not acting like he's a special player, he's above everybody else, and you're just doing the things with the guys, getting after with them in the offseason, trust me when I say this, you will earn the respect of your teammates. And those teammates will want to play harder for you. They will listen to you when you're coaching them up, being like an assistant coach on the field because that's what a quarterback is. Trust me when I say this, they will be more bought into what you're saying because they will have a higher respect level for you.